So Git Waldron, Niall, a uh, very interesting item he had for sale on social media this week. Yeah, well, I think he was um, he was uh, taking the piss as <laughs> as 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 it's called in the business. But yeah, he put up a he put up a, a post on social media saying, um, "Cab are making me sell all my Michael Jackson memorabilia. Highest bidder by twelve tonight gets it." And he had a picture of uh, Michael Jackson, a Michael Jackson glove, just one know, glove. Just and one he glove. said that the, it's the collection. I'm wondering, do we know what else? Well, I Could think be part of that. Well, I think I think I think there's very little, but I suppose the um we had actually it was great really because it got got us got us to have a story in the Sunday World and use the the little prefix mood criminal. Yeah, I enjoyed that. But I suppose um he's he's a bit of bravado. Um you know, putting up this post and getting a few laughs. Uh, I doubt he does have any Michael Jackson memorabilia for sale, but he the reason he's putting it up, of course, is that um, Cab also put out a statement last week um, telling how they'd seized his house in Kalala Road in, in Cabra. Um, after a long, a long battle with the Criminal Assets Bureau, it's finally been handed over. They put up pictures of it, um, you know, with metal metal across the doors, um, across the windows. And it's, it's, Cab don't always put out these kind of statements, but they did on this occasion because Git Waldron has been a big figure in, in criminality in, in North Dublin, an important uh, character. And it is uh, a victory for the Criminal Assets Bureau. Um, this house was seized. It's, uh, uh, you know, a house in, in Cabra, but it's probably what's on the inside. I think they put out a figure saying it was something over 400,000 had been spent on renovations. Um, they also spoke about how they'd seized a number of, of watches. So this is, it's kind of a public war, a public uh, relations battle, maybe Git Waldron putting out that, but you know, Git Waldron has been a, a significant figure in in organised crime um, for over two decades. Mm. He first would have, I suppose, come to guard attention as, um, or at least become a, a guard target when he was a member of, he was one of, he was known as one of Eamon de Don Dunn's henchmen. Um, Git Waldron would have been regularly seen, seen with him. Um, he, in about 2009, he was involved in a kind of high profile court case where um, a guy called into his brother's house uh, speaking about a shooting that had occurred. That guy was drunk and then headed up to a pub in Cabra. And shortly after, um, four guys arrived in a car, including David Waldron and his brother Christopher or Git, as he's known. And they would have uh, attacked the guy in the pub. Then he would have been beaten outside and he ultimately, Christopher Waldron and David Waldron, both ended up serving a prison sentence for, for that crime, for that assault. Um, but in the aftermath of, of the Don's murder, um, the Don was murdered in 2011. He was shot uh, dead in a pub in Cabra. Um, in the aftermath of that, um, the Don, of course, was one of the, the Kinnan cartel clients and probably in all reality, um, well, in, in fact, the Kinnan cartel, um, because of his, the Eamon Dunn's volatile nature and the fact that he murdered, you know, 18, 19 people, often some of those guys were murdered for nothing more than kind of paranoid fantasies. But in the aftermath, even of, of his him being shot, the, the Waldrons became even more significant mm. figures um, in criminality in Dublin, uh, North Dublin, and continued to have very close ties with the Kinnan cartel. They do and this seems like to me like he's just he is a part of stories he's kind of a footnote in all these gangland stories as you go along his you know he's got uh, connections to Marlowe Highland John Dunn like you said uh, the Bradley brothers uh, Wayne and Allen uh, but he's in his own right himself and his brother are kind of you know, they are their own story in a way. Yeah, they became very, very significant figures. I mean, if you look back, as you said, the Bradley brothers and 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 the Waldrons and Eamon Dunn, they were all their own sort of crew that really controlled, um, that crew controlled a massive uh, patch of drug dealing, I suppose, across North Dublin, Cabra, Finglas, Ballybun, Blanchardstown. They would have had a very much an iron grip on that. But after, um, after the, 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 the murder of Eamon Dunn, it kind of scattered around and some people stayed in with the Kinnahan cartel, in particular the Waldron, the Waldron brothers. Um, obviously, David uh, was uh, Christopher's older brother, was convicted of that same assault. 
But if you look at the the scale at which he was operating, at least um, while he was in prison for that assault, he he was part of uh, he he saw planning permission to build this massive home um, in a place called Darview in County mm-hmm. Wexford. Um, it, the house was you know cost it, it was kind of a, a split level bungalow. Is that what it's called? Where you know it looked like a, a, a single level home from the outside but when you go to the back it it has two levels that had this man cave as as Nicola Talent you know who's off this she fancies that man cave a lot doesn't she 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 likes that she likes that term man cave yeah so she's off this week so we won't even reference it but (laughs) but, um so he he, even then you know you're talking about people with access to a huge amount of money now David Waldron um is currently also in the middle of a, a major battle with the Criminal Assets Bureau that that is about to, you know, that's still ongoing. Um, the Criminal Assets Bureau have sought three homes off him as well as other assets. It's all amounting to over £2 million. Um, but Christopher Waldron, uh, his his battle has come to an end and they've, they've seized, they seized this house. Um, they also seized as I said, was it seven watches? I mean, they detailed them in in, in great detail, mm. Cab, in the end. Um, I don't know anything about watches, but I'll read out a bit of it then. Yeah, um, go first. Now, I always pronounce it wrong. Is it a Breitling Super Avenger automatic chronograph watch sold for 3000 an 18K Rolex date watch sold for 10900 and a Cartier automatic watch for 1700 and so on. So all... On watches alone, um, they also had a what is this? A Oyster Perpetual Day Automatic Watch, which sold for thirty thousand. So he had seventy four thousand pounds worth of watches. Yeah, uh, seized alone. And seven watches for one person is yeah, it's quite it's, significant. It is because, but you know, watches of course hold their value, and that's that's part of why the um, why they're they're of you know they're of benefit to people and um, they also seized cab um i think it was a couple of sums of cash 4845 um but i mean i suppose it's 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 what cab say mm. um they say as part of our investigation a quantity surveyor was appointed to carry out an inspection of the home this is the home in cabra mm-hmm. which had been extensively renovated the estimated costs of these works, including fees, was in the region of four hundred and thirty thousand, which is an incredible amount of money. Yeah. Like obviously, the the property itself w- wouldn't be Probably worth, worth that. that at all. I mean, this is something you see through the threads again and again with these cab cases: is the inside of these houses are done up to the nines. And yeah. Like they'll be, a, you know, a relatively rundown area, yet they'll have pumped all this money into the house. And the same as well with the watches. The one thing you'll guarantee is the house is worth a fortune and there's going to be a ton of watches in there. Exactly. I mean, like this is, um, there was a belief, I think, from people involved in organised crime maybe a decade ago, and that belief is is long gone at this stage, but that that cab wouldn't particularly look at the, they look at the property mm. value and the property will become you know, would be questioned about how they 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 amass the money to to buy the house, but the renovations themselves would be paid for by cash. There'd be no trace of it. There were, you know, they might not have invoices or anything like that, and that that wouldn't be considered. But Cab changed their tack and they started going after, as well as the the property itself. They'd also go after renovations, foreign holidays other sort of discretionary spending. Mm. And in recent times, they've also gone after spending by the partners. So all of that has changed. And obviously, we don't know when the renovations carried out at, at, at that at what particular point. But they've definitely become um, cab of up their game in that way. Yeah, a lot um, of the time as well, you'd see designer handbags and shoes and that coming yeah. out of these houses. Nothing that we've seen anyway so far from, from this case. But does he, tell us a bit about Get Waldron's family life. Does he have a wife and kids? He does. He, he does have a family life, um, and you know he still lives in the area. Um, he also kind of made the Sunday World when he was he was one of the pallbearers at um, at the funeral of James Wheeler Whelan. Yeah. So he he was one of the guys carrying the coffin. And there was a purpose to all of all of that. Um, his his status in the criminal underworld was, you know, by making that that was that was a statement. Um, but Cab, you know, are clear. They fitted them all out in their suits and everything. They for fitted them all out in their suits. I mean, that was probably one of the most uh, high profile funerals because of yeah. this big forty five minute video that was shot, where you saw, 
you know, 30, 40 scrambler bikes in advance of the funeral. There was also that famous video of a cardboard cutout of James Whelan, where, which, where the, you know, it was being handed around at, a, at an after party. So the Waldrons are still respected characters in that and criminal underworld. associating with these people that are obviously huge stories once again. They are. And, you know, obviously if you carry a coffin at a gangland funeral, you know you're, you're, you're going to be you're going to be photographed. But I think, you know, in Cab have become, you know, they've become very adept at getting a point across. And in their statement, they say the funds in particular for renovating the house were used to build an extension um, of the property were also determined to be, to have been derived from criminal activity. They also say the property will be sold by private treaty and or public auction in due course, the proceeds of which will be lodged in the state's central fund. Crime does not pay, catches up in with you in the end. You see, crime does not pay. So this is their their cabar, you know, while the assets themselves are of great value to the state and that money is spent then to save taxpayers in some way. But I think it's also um the modern guardy, they have become more adept at using the media as well for a good purpose. Yeah. The purpose is to say that, that you know, if you become involved in organised crime and you profit from it, not only will you have those assets seized, but also that that will become public knowledge, that there'll be clear statements made about it. And that also acts as a deterrent, not just for Christopher Waldron himself, but also for the people associated with him mm. in terms of his family or, or or his loved ones. Yeah, and I mean, you probably know this from being in the newsroom, but the NCA are brilliant at doing their yeah. press releases and telling you what's what. Is this something new that we're seeing from CAB? They're kind of maybe taking a leaf out of their book? Well, I mean, I think CAB have probably been doing it for the last couple of years at least, but they have they have updated um the way in which they 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 publicize mm. these events and like i think you know while it's not just a, a bit of glory like if for for the officers i do think it serves a very uh, particular purpose um like yeah. organized criminals maybe the mid level like a bit of attention but so the people at the very top don't like um don't like that level of publicity and if they know that it's coming it, it it can act as a serious deterrent so i think the criminal assets bureau and the guards in general have become more adept at, at looking at a holistic picture in, in in deterrent actions for for organized criminality and um, you can see as well in in drew harris for example recently mm. has done a lot of um interviews where he's he's you know naming or at least, you know, answering questions about about Kinahan cartel figures. I think a decade ago, the guards would have said, <laughs> would not have done that, you yeah. know. And I think it is, um, yeah, it's a it's a, it's a bit of a change, but I think it's a it's the right thing to do. Yeah, and his brother David, you were saying he is also he's at the moment going through the, the cab proceedings. Yeah. So when do we expect to kind of hear more about that? Well, I think that's also uh, edging towards a conclusion, whatever whatever that reaches. I mean, these cab cases can go on for a long time. Um, David Waldron um, had uh, received some legal aid for some parts of his his challenges, um, and that's that's I suppose winding through the system now. Um, but it, it, it will come to an end, I think, in the near future. And this is another thing as well. Sometimes they like to settle out of court, you know, the criminals before they even get that far. Yeah. Was any of that happening in this case? Well, look, these things are settled to a degree, I suppose. Yeah. But I mean, obviously, the David Waldron case is still ongoing. And you see, there can be disputes about uh, parts of the case as well. Um, it's not necessarily, um, uh, you know, a win all or lose all scenario. Um, you know, people can put forward explanations for it part of the assets. So we have seen in other court cases where a property can be seized, but the the the, the criminal figure involved might get 20% of be entitled to 20% of the proceeds of the of the of the sale, for example. But the criminal assets bureau cases are very uh, difficult to fight because if you can't show if you've paid a deposit for a house mm. and you can't show where that's come from, um, you really are going to be in trouble. Yeah. So if anyone's looking for any Michael Jackson memorabilia, maybe we'll have to keep an eye out for when that goes up and sale. Well, exactly. Exactly. Thank you very much, Niall. Thanks, Loda. I'm Nicola Talent and you're watching Crime World, a podcast about criminals, drugs and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. 
and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts.